If you were someone who wrote code in the 80s and 90s, you usually started from scratch and you had to do everything yourself. If you're a Kalmark working on the Doom, you had to invent your own 3D engine from scratch and it was very, very hard. There were no internet tutorials and forums where you could just see an answer to any single problem you have, however specific it is. If you were Jeff Atwood and you were programming Stack Overflow from the beginning, you will remember calling Microsoft on the phone in order to get technical support for how to use Visual Studio. It was very, very hard. And I would argue, much more satisfying. When I was eight, nine years old, I programmed small routines for my Commodore 64 in BASIC. Actually, something that was called Simon's BASIC. I'm guessing with some guy named Simon writing a couple of routines on top of the standard BASIC. But it was very satisfying to see the magic of computer executing your orders after you press enter. Yuja always wanted to be a professional pianist, actually a composer. She finished the elementary music school, but she never dared to take that path. She did not have the courage to invest the time needed and put all her eggs in one basket, because if the risk did not pay off, and for this path it extremely rarely does, she thought she would be very unhappy. So she took a slightly safer path, studying interior design and ended up doing uh, graphic design for the la largest part of her monthly income. Now she does have um, a digital tablet as most designers nowadays do, but she does not part so easily from the roughness of the paper. And as a graphic designer, you can take a single piece of paper and then create a piece of art on your own, single-handedly and fully. Look at it and say, ah. Now where does that satisfaction come from? Well, first of all, she had to put some effort in it. But the other factor is autonomy she has over her work. And at the end, she gets to see the product of her work. If you saw the movie Ex Machina, it is one of the many movies and books that idealize this single genius programmer who creates an AGI in this case. And that sounds cool and romantic and every programmer out there maybe dreams of being the one. And even though there are some programmers who get that credit, that's almost never the case. There are no single programmers anymore, only teams. And if someone manages to program AGI, it will probably not be a single gen genius in the basement. It will be an orchestrated effort of, of 20 universities and a thousand people probably. So, as with all aspects of our lives, everything has become so complicated that no one person can handle it on their own. No Renaissance people in that sense anymore because every field has a hundred branches with a hundred sub-branches each and our intelligence and memory are limited, even for the Einsteins among you. So our ego takes the hit and we have to accept we cannot sit at our computer and write a whole game from scratch in a few months, like in the early days of video games. I mean, you can write some indie game, but you will never compete with AAA video games who have thousands and thousands of people working on them and costing through 300 millions of dollars with budgets rising even more. Now, you want to create something great? Then you have to accept to be a small cog in a large machine. Not a Captain America, but one of the people there. And there are no programs written from scratch anymore. For everything you want to do, you will want to use existing libraries. You want to develop a website, you will use entire frameworks like Django or Flask, Node.js. For the front end, you will use jQuery, React, Vue. You want to create a 3D viewer for the web, you will use Babylon or 3JS. I mean, it's ridiculous to start mentioning them because there's so many of them. And the crazy part is that most of them are open source and free. And talking about ego and recognition, 99% of people using those libraries have absolutely no idea who created them, me included. So you want to create your own BIM software? Good luck competing with the ones that are there for decades, so you will mostly just end up writing plugins for them. You want to use an AI algorithm? You will use TensorFlow, PyTorch, ML, you name it. For almost anything you want to do, if you start from scratch, you will use months and probably years just to program something that already exists as a library and that you can use out of the box, most of the time for free. So you become this Lego master that puts blocks on top of blocks on top of blocks and then on top of all of that you get to create some code of your own. That is as if you went mountain climbing and I told you let's not waste the whole day, let's take the lift until a certain point and then we can just 
stroll to the top in half an hour and enjoy the view. Now, will you enjoy the view? Maybe a bit. When you look at the end product, it will be there, but it will never compare to the enjoyment you would feel after climbing the mountain on your own from the bottom, because the effort and the autonomy factor were not fully satisfied. And effort and reward go hand in hand. So once we lose the autonomy, once we lose that feeling of creating something from scratch, like an artist does, once we lose the frustration of not knowing what to do until we finally somehow solve it, we also lose the fulfillment, the sense of joy. And there is no way around this. We have to accept it. This is the only way the world can progress and it is progressing exponentially because we keep climbing over the shoulders of giants who stand on the shoulders of other giants. But we're not talking about progress here. We're talking about personal satisfaction. Can we learn to cope with it? Can we change our psychology? Or am I the only one that actually has this problem? Look, this channel is seen mostly by architects and people in the construction industry who are interested in automation. And since there are not so many experienced programmers in that intersection of the Venn diagram, I want to warn you in a way about this path. Although very exciting, it might be disappointing for someone with a strong creative ego. And when it comes to strong ego, of course, I'm not talking about the architects among you. The only solution is to change the way we look at things. I guess. If you want to work alone and create a masterpiece, I guess you should try to be a writer, painter, sculptor. But in this world of programming, you have to be ready to be a part of an ant colony. And even though there are hierarchies and they are famous and great programmers, no one does anything alone and from scratch anymore. So we have to deal with it. Now, there you go. I did not intend to share some profound knowledge here, but instead share some of the personal thoughts about this programming world that is becoming very common in our industry as well. There are different prices we have to pay for progress. And this might be a small one, but for me at least, not such a negligible one. Yuja does not earn so much money as Elio does. Not by far. But she doesn't mind. Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi wrote famously about the state of flow that people can tap into when they're doing something creative. And she knows it well. She practically lives there. But she also remembers often when Plato wrote about children, how we should teach them music before we teach them anything else. In learning to pay attention to graceful rhythms and harmonies, their whole consciousness would become ordered. Now she remembers her piano lessons and she remembered thinking how impossible it seemed to play a single passage until it became as easy as a summer breeze. Effort, autonomy, result, joy, order. Stay free.